Good morning, KB Kids, and welcome to Sunday School Today. My name is Miss D, and guess what? It is a lesson number four of our Life of Jesus series. I'm excited that you made it to church today. I'm excited that you are here to continue on with learning about the life of Jesus. So for the past few weeks, we have been talking about the life of Jesus. We started off where? Yep, at his birth. And then we went to the temple where we learned how Jesus thought it was so important to learn from others who could tell him about God, learn the scriptures. And then we continued on. Do you guys remember last week? Yeah, he was baptized. Last week we talked about how he was obedient and he was baptized. Even though he didn't necessarily need it because he was God, but he wanted to be obedient to what the word was here on earth. And so he was baptized. And today we are talking about him being tempted. Yeah, do you guys know what temptation is? Well, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. You know me, I get excited. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but it is time for scripture memory. It is time to hide that word of God in our heart. This is the last week for our October scriptures. So be sure that you memorize it, practice it, so that you can say it for the scripture memory team a little bit later. All right, make sure you stand up, make sure you're participating, make sure you're repeating, doing the motions, so you can hide that word in your heart. Let's do it, scripture memory time. All right, preschool, it is scripture memory time, and here is your scripture for the month. It comes from John 15, 9, and this is what it says. As the Father loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Okay, so John 15, 9. Can you guys say that with me? With me? John 15, 9. As the Father, so we're going to point to Jesus, point to God. As the Father loves me, I, keep pointing to yourself, have also loved you. Abide in my love. Okay, we're going to abide in Christ's love. It's all over us. All right, let's try that again. John 15, 9. As the Father loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. John 15, 9. Let's remember that. Let's say that. Let's Commit it to memory, and when the scripture memory team comes by, go ahead and say it for them so you can get your prizes and your points. All right, great job, preschool. Go ahead and take your seat. Well done, well done, well done. All right, if you are in kindergarten, you can go ahead and stand on your feet. It is your scripture memory time. Kindergarten, your scripture memory is John 15, 12. It says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Okay? So we're going to say, this is my commandment. Okay? We're going to tell somebody to do something. So this is my commandment that you love one another as I, that's Jesus, have loved you. Okay? John 15, 12, or sorry, John 15, 2. All right, here it is. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. John 15, verse 2. Kindergarten, well done. Go ahead and continue to memorize that, practice it. Say it as you're brushing your teeth. Say it as you're eating your breakfast. Say it on your way to school. Whatever it is that you're doing, take a couple minutes out of each day to memorize that scripture. Great job, guys. We'll get back to our lesson time. All right, guys, we are talking about temptation. And so before I kind of asked you, what is temptation? Well, temptation is when we have a pull or desire to do something. And now, temptation is not always bad. You know, temptation can be, you know what, I'm tempted to just go and, you know, give this person a hug because they look like they need one. I'm tempted to go and sit by this person because they're all by themselves. 
But most of the time, when we think about temptation, we are thinking about things that are not necessarily good for us. And so we're talking about today how Jesus was tempted. Did you guys know that he went through every single thing that we've ever gone through here in our lives? That's one of the reasons why he came here on earth is to experience things. And so he can help us and tell us how we can get through the issues and the, the circumstances that arise in our lives. And so we're all often um, tempted. Now, I know for myself, do you know what tempts me? Sweet treats. Yes, Miss D has a sweet tooth. Yes, sweet treats. And most of the time I'm tempted when I'm going grocery shopping or I'm going to the store, um, I'm tempted to buy those snacks and sweet treats that I know that aren't very good for me. And so I'm going through the aisles and I turn down the, the, the candy aisle and I'm like, hmm. Hmm, what looks good today? But I'm thinking, no, I don't need this candy. It's not good for me. And sometimes I'm able to resist and sometimes I give in and I buy that candy. You know, have you guys ever experienced things like that? All right. I want you guys to take a few minutes to discuss. Have you ever been tempted? And if you have, what tempts you? Wait for your teacher. Raise your hand. Let's discuss. <laughs> like me? I know I am. Well, like I was saying before, Jesus has been, uh, he's gone through all the things that we've gone through. The Bible says he was tempted in all things just as we were. So this particular time, Jesus was in the wilderness and he had been there for 40 days and he hadn't eaten and he hadn't drinking anything and he was hungry and he was tired. And so when you're hungry and tired, I don't know about you, but I'm not always my best. When I'm hungry and tired and I'm on my way home, I know I have healthy food at home, but I'm so hungry and I'm so tired that maybe I go through the drive through at Culver's and get a burger and a shake, even though I know it's not the best for me. You know, sometimes we just make decisions that are not very good when we're hungry and we're tired. And so Jesus was hungry and tired and he was in the wilderness. He was by himself. And the Bible says the devil came to tempt him. He tempted him with money, with power, with riches for people to, to bow down to him. All if he would follow Satan. All if he would follow the devil. And you know what Jesus did? The Bible said he resisted the temptation. He used the word of God to get out of that situation. He said, the word says this. The word says that. The word says, don't do this. The word says, do that. And when you use the word, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. When you use the word of God, which is why we have to hide it in our hearts so we're ready. When you use the word of God, the Bible says that the devil will have to leave. One version says, yell aloud, no, and the devil will flee from you. Sometimes you might have to yell aloud, no, out loud. And people might look around and be like, what's wrong with her? It doesn't matter what they think. I know I am resisting temptation. I know I am using the word of God to stop me from doing something that is not good for me. 
So I want you guys to let's check out our animated video and let's think about how Jesus was tempted and how he used the word and how we can also use the word to resist temptation. Let's check it out. The Desert Temptation. Do you remember what happened after Jesus was baptized? Um, let's see. Oh, I remember. The Spirit of God appeared like a dove. Yes, what else? The people heard the voice of God saying, This is my son. You remembered. And then the people that were there got super excited because of all that they had seen and heard. Right. It was the perfect time for Jesus to say, Okay, everybody, it's time to follow me. I am the Messiah. Is that what he did? No, not at all. No? Well, what did he do? He walked off into the desert all by himself. What? Why? Jesus knew what was coming. He knew that being the Messiah, that saving Israel and saving the world was going to be a very hard job. He knew he couldn't do it unless he was very close to God, his father. So he went off to the desert? Where he could be alone with his dad. How long did he stay there? Forty days. Forty days? Yes. During that time, he didn't eat any food. He spent all that time talking to God, his father. And at the end of the forty days, Jesus and his dad were very, very close. He must have been so hungry. He really was. And then Jesus had a visitor. A visitor? Who? Remember that sneaky snake? No way. He showed up? Yep. God's number one enemy. The one who had lied to Adam and Eve so sin would ruin God's world. He knew that Jesus had a big job ahead. That sneaky snake showed up to tempt Jesus with ways to make things easier. If you really are God's son, why don't you just turn these rocks into delicious bread? Then you can eat. Yum, yum, yum. No, I don't live by bread. I live by the words that come from my father. I thought Jesus was really hungry. He was, but Jesus was trusting his father to meet his needs, not food. Oh, well, what happened next? The enemy took Jesus to the highest place in Jerusalem, the very top of the temple. Jump off. God will send angels to save you, and then everyone will be so amazed, and they will want to follow you. That is not God's plan. Do not test God with tricks. Finally, the enemy took Jesus to the top of a high mountain. Jesus could see all the kingdoms of the world. So, do you want to rule all these kingdoms? Because I can make that happen. All you have to do is bow down to me. So, what do you think Jesus did? What did he do? God wanted Jesus to be a new kind of king, a blessing for the whole world. Jesus knew God's plan was going to be very hard. God's enemy said he could make it easy. <laughs> so, what do you think? I will only bow down to God. Leave me now! Am I glad to see him go? <laughs> me too. The enemy had tried his best to fool Jesus, the same way he had fooled Adam and Eve many years before. But Jesus was too close to God, his father, to fall for the sneaky snake's tricks. Especially after spending all the time alone with him. That's right. 
being close to his father made Jesus strong. So, what happened next? Jesus went back to the city. Really? Why? Because now it was time to save the world. Awesome! Alright guys, our KB challenge for today is to use the Word of God to resist temptation. That's right, just as we've talked about, just as we saw in our animated video, how Jesus used the Word to get out of a situation that was difficult. Was he tempted? Maybe he was hungry. Maybe he wanted power here on earth and didn't want to wait for it until he got back to heaven. Maybe, you know, he just wanted everybody to love him because at this point, there were a lot of people that didn't like him. He was tempted, but you know, the temptation in and of itself is not a sin. It's if we give in to the temptation. I might be tempted to get candy and eat sweet treats, but if I don't gobble it all down um, in one sitting, then I've won. I've resisted that temptation. And so this week, I want you guys, those things you talked about you were tempted to do, maybe get that extra dessert you know you're not supposed to get, or say something that is not kind, or watch something that you're not supposed to. Resist the temptation. Use scripture. Yell a loud no to the devil. Pray and ask God to help you to resist that temptation. Ask your parents to help you to resist that temptation. Sometimes you have to remove the thing completely so then it won't, you won't be tempted to do it. So whatever you guys have to do, that is your KB challenge for today. Sound good? Can I get a thumbs up? Awesome. All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit our KB recap. And today it's a little multiple choice. So if you see the right answer, go ahead and yell out the letter when you know. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Question number one. How many days did Jesus go without food in the desert? A, zero, B, 14, or C, 40? How many days did we say? C, 40, very good. If you yelled out C, give yourself a high five or give your neighbor a high five. All right, well done. Question number two, who came to tempt Jesus? A, the Holy Spirit, B, the devil, or C, John the Baptist? Who was trying to tempt Jesus to do wrong? Yeah, that's B. That's that devil. Give him a boo. Very good. All right, here it is. Question number three. What did Jesus say when the devil told him to turn stones into bread? Remember, he was hungry. A, sounds good. B, it is written, man does not live by bread alone. Or C, mm, I'd rather have pizza. Well, if it was me, I'd probably say I'd rather have pizza. But he said, B, it is written, man cannot live on bread alone. In other words, yes, food is important, but it is not the most important thing in his life. Following God was. So very good. All right, question number four. Each time he was tempted, Jesus, A, resisted the devil, B, used God's word, or C, both A and B. Mm, tricky, Miss D. C, both A and B. He resisted the devil and he used the word. If you got that right, double high fives to your neighbors. All right, here he is, question number five. Which of these statements is true? A, Jesus always resisted temptation, he never sinned. B, Jesus didn't use God's word to help him resist temptation. Or C, Jesus gave into the devil's temptation. Hmm, which one of those is right? A, Jesus always resisted temptation. He never sinned. So remember, if you don't give in to the temptation, it is not a sin. So Jesus has, is sinless. He never gave in to the temptation. Was he tempted? Yes. Did he do it? No. So he is without sin. Unfortunately, you and I cannot say the same thing, but we can repent and we can turn back to God. All right, well done, KB Kids. Give yourself a round of applause. I hope you guys are ex as excited about this series as I am. We are continuing to learn about the life of Jesus, continuing to learn who he was and how we can model our lives after him. Until next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I will see you same time, same place next Sunday. Until then, it's me, 